Today, I want to discuss a very important topic with you. If you look at the world events, the Bible says that when Jesus Christ is about to come, there will be wars and rumors of war. And so, you look at the war between Israel and the Hamas and the Palestinians. And I want you to connect it to the calendar of God. That God has something special to tell the whole world about what is going on. And even the Russia-Ukraine war has something to tell the people of God. So today, I have chosen a topic which will bring your mind back to living for eternity. The world is moving so fast that if you are not careful, many things will distract your attention. And that you will forget that we are here on transit. Hallelujah. We are here on transit. The world has become so secularized to the point that God, who is the creator of heaven and the earth, is being pushed away from even his earth and being pushed out of our hearts and our minds. Shall we turn our Bibles to Revelation chapter 20, 11 to 15? Revelation 20, 11 to 15. And I'll speak to the topic, the book of life. The book of life. What is the book of life? Is your name in the book of life? And before I finish my delivery, I will give you the, the two schools of thoughts about the book of life. And the one which suits your understanding, you, 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 you take it. Revelation 20, 11 to 15. Then I saw a great white throne and him who was seated on it. The earth and the heavens fled from his presence and there was no place for them. And I saw the dead both great and small, standing before the throne. And books were opened. What are those books? And how many are they? The Bible is silent about them. But by the grace of God, I will tell you the number of those books and what they are. Then another book was opened, which is the book of life. The dead were judged according to what they had done as recorded in the books. The sea gave up the dead that were in it. Death and hate gave up the dead that were in them. Underline death and hate. Depending on which version of the Bible you are using, if you are using NIV to say hate, other versions will say death and grief. Other versions also say death and hell were thrown into the lake of fire. The sea gave up the dead that were in them, and death and hate gave up the dead that were in them. And each person was judged according to what they had done. Then death and hate or grave or hell were thrown into the lake of fire. The lake of fire is the second death. And anyone whose name was not found written in the book of life was thrown into the lake of fire. And the book of life is critical. Those whose names were not found in the book of life were thrown into the lake of fire. Were thrown into the lake of fire. So you have to be sure whether your name is in the book of life or not. So that you can make amends as long as you are alive. 
you still have a second, a third, and a fourth chance until you die. Revelation 3, 4 to 6, and I read. Yet you have a few people in Sardis who have not sold their clothes. They will walk with me dressed in white, for they are worthy. The one who is victorious will, like them, be dressed in white, and I will never blot out then their name, the name of the person from the book of life. I will never blot out the name of that person from the book of life. If you have a pen or anything that can highlight or mark, underline, never blot out the name. Never blot out the name of that person from the book of life. But I will acknowledge that name before my father and his angels. And whoever has yes, let him hear what the spirit says to the churches. Amen. Is your name in the book of life? Is your name in the book of life? You look around and there are many records there are many establishments that have our names. I remember about 25 years ago, I wanted my certificate. And when I searched through all my records and my archives, I couldn't find them. And so I had to call the school where I had my secondary education. And when I called out my name, they were able to search the files and get me another set of certificates. And so when you go back to the schools that you have attended, you will find your name there. When you go to the hospital, you will find your name. Whoever has ever visited a hospital, you will get your name there. Those who have ever voted, you will get your name. When you go to the, the electoral commission, you will find your name in the books. So there are many places that we find our names. All those that have got national insurance card, NHIS card, you go there and you find your name. If you have a Ghana card, you go there, you find your name. Any of us who had a telephone, either Vodafone, Airtel, or MTN, you go to the communication firms and you will find your name. If you have a passport, you go to the foreign affairs, you will find your name. If your, your birth was ever recorded, you will find your name in the Birth and Dev Registry Department of Ghana. If you have ever been counted, you have taken part in any form of census, you will find your name somewhere. If you have ever gone for a visa, as somebody had his or her visa for UK, you will get your name in any of the embassies that you have ever visited. Your names are somewhere, at least somewhere. But it's your name in the Book of Life. Is your name in the book of life. When we read Philippians chapter 4, verse 2, and I want to read Philippians 4, Philippians chapter 4, verse 2. There were two women in the church who had troubles. They were fighting in the church. One is called Iodia, the other, the other one is called Syntache. He said, Paul wrote to the church in Philippi and said that they should help these women, Iodia and Syntache. They were at loggerhead. And he said, I plead with Iodia and I plead with Syntyche to be of the same mind in the Lord. Yes, I ask that you, my true companion, help these women since they have contended at my side in the cause of the gospel, along with Clement and the rest of my co-workers, whose names are in the book of life. I wonder how Paul got to know, and Paul was so sure that these people had their names in the book of life, because I don't know, for your case, whether your name is in the book of life, but I know mine, whether it's there or not, I should know. How was Paul so sure that the names of these women and the other members of, of, of his team they had their names in the book of life? Because they had contended with him with, in the gospel. The Bible says in Romans chapter 1, verse 16 to 17, he said, For I am not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God for salvation to everyone who believes, 
the Jew first and then the Greeks. For in the gospel is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith. At as it is written, the just shall live by faith. So within the gospel is the power to save. And so anybody who has received Jesus Christ through the gospel must have his name in the book of life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Again in 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 9 to 10, he said, Who saved us and called us to a whole, with a holy calling, not because of our works, but because of his own purpose and grace, which he, which he, which he gave us in Christ Jesus before the ages began, and which now has been manifested through the appearing of our Lord Jesus Christ, who abolished death and brought life and immortality through the gospel. Hallelujah. Have you received Jesus as Lord and personal Savior? Can I hear you say yes or no? Have you received Jesus Christ as Lord and personal Savior through the gospel? Yes. Then your name must be in the book of life. That was why Paul was so sure and emphatic that the names of Clement, Syntyche, and Yodia, in spite of the quarrel between the two of them, Paul was so emphatic that their names are in the book of life. What is the book of life? It's a living book. All the books that I, 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 I cataloged earlier on are books of death. When you go to Lance, you find a lot of files. When you go to the courts, the judicial house, you find a lot of files. You find names. But all those books have no life. But there is one book which is called the book of life. It is a living book. The reason why it's a living book is that it contains the names of those who have eternal life. We have two kinds of life. We have what, what uh, the Greek will call bios. Bios is life that is sustained by food, water, and breath. And your friend Bios. That is why the study of life is called biology. Bios is the life that is sustained by water, food, and breath. When you stop eating for a long time, when you, you stop taking water for a long time, you can pass out. And when you stop breathing for less than five minutes or at most ten, you will, you will die. Bios, that is life sustained by food, water, and breath. And we have what we call Zoe. That is the God kind of life. Z-O-G. With uh, the French, what the French call a sante That on the ye. Zoe. God kind of life. That is eternal life. And so those whose names... Whose, those whose names are in that book, because they have eternal life, that is why the Bible called the book, the book of life. If you don't have Jesus, and you are not born again, your name cannot enter that book. Hallelujah. Because that book is the preserve of all those who have eternal life. That is why the book is called the book of life. And if you listen carefully to the passage that we read, you will see that the book of life is attached to a certain throne. John said that, and I saw a great white throne, and he that is seated on the throne, from which the heavens and the earth fled before his presence. Because it had no place for them. And then I saw the dead, both great and small, standing before the throne. And books were opened. And another book called the book of life was opened. And so this kind of book is attached to a certain kind of throne. And that throne is called the great white throne. Hallelujah. I have searched through the scriptures and I have located 
four different thrones. Four different thrones. And most of the time, almost all the thrones are attached to a certain kind of judgment, except one. The first one is the throne of glory or the glorious throne of Christ. The throne of glory or the glorious throne of Christ. I'm talking of the same throne. Then the second one is the judgment seat of Christ. The judgment seat of Christ. The third one is the great white throne. The great white throne, which will form part of my message today. The great white throne. And these first three, these first three thrones are tied to a certain kind of judgment. Anytime Jesus or God sits on any of these thrones, then he is going to dish out judgment. But the fourth throne, which is found in Hebrews chapter 4, Verse 14 to 16 is called the throne of grace. The throne of grace. Can I have that one? He said, therefore, since we have a great high priest who has ascended into heaven. All right. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to empathize with our weakness. But we have one who has been tempted in every way just as. We are, yet he did not sin. 16. Let us then approach God's throne of grace with confidence so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. Hallelujah. As of all the four thrones, it's only this throne that God has specially prepared and selected to dispense grace and mercy. Kunya ahodo ni nyina wenku anu nyankopon ahyeda asiesie no edi asi ho se ehode e oba oba ye omoburu hunu na wariye wo adon hallelujah so the bible says that we come there boldly in faith we come there boldly in confidence to find mercy to find to receive mercy and find grace. Hallelujah. But that is not my attention for today. So I will skip that one. And then I will move on. The three kinds of throne which is attached to judgment. The first one is the throne of glory. Or the glorious throne of Christ. Matthew 1928. Matthew 1928. Matthew 1928. Jesus said to them, Truly I say to you, in the new world, when the Son of Man will sit on his glorious throne, you who have followed me will sit on 12 thrones, judging the, the 12 tribes of Israel. And so, the throne of glory or the glorious throne of Christ, when Jesus sits on, he will go through two kinds of judgment. The judgment of the 12 tribes of Israel and then judgment of the nations. Judgment of the 12 tribes of Israel and then judgment of the nations. Then, judgment of the nations. Matthew 25 31 to 32. Matthew 25, 31 to 32. The glorious throne of Christ or the throne of Christ's glory is devoted for the judgment of the 12 tribes of Israel and then judgment of the nations. And I read from Matthew 25, 31. It says, when the Son of Man comes in his glory 
and all the angels with him, then he will sit on his glorious throne. Before him will be gathered all the nations, and he will separate a people from one another as shepherd separate the sheep from the goat. That is when he will separate the whole nations of the world into sheep and goat. Now you remember the story of the farmer who prepared his farm and sowed his field. And then later when his laborers went into the field and they came and told him that somebody has sown something, a task, ta into the wheat. And they wanted to go and uproot them. And then the master of the farm said that, no, wait. Wait for the wheat and the task to grow together. During the harvest time, the difference between the wheat and the task will be so clearly defined that it will not be difficult to misplace or mix the wheat with the task. And so he told them to wait for the wheat and the task to grow together. At the proper time, the angels will come down from heaven and separate the wheat from the task. So now, we are all doing church. And a lot of things we call church, but it's not. But each of us have time to execute whatever he thinks he is doing. A time will come that Jesus Christ will sit on his glorious throne and separate the wheat from the task. Nations will be separated from one another. And the Bible says that those who go to the right will be called sheep, and those that go to the left will be called goat. And that will be done when Jesus sits on his glorious throne. If you look at the tense, he says that he will sit on it, meaning that now he's not sitting on the glorious throne. The throne that Jesus occupies now is called the throne of grace. Hallelujah. For now, we are in the dispensation of grace. And so anytime you go before the Lord, whether in worship or in prayer, the throne that you visit is the throne of grace. Hallelujah. And he is there waiting for you. He is there waiting for you to give you mercy and grace in time of need. The next throne is called the judgment seat of Christ. That one is different from the glorious throne of Christ. This one, when he sits on this seat, then all believers will come before this throne. During the rapture. And I read from 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 10. It said, For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ. The order is not absolute all. When he says all, he's not talking about all the world, all the people of the world. No. He is talking about the church. Believers. He said, All. We must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ so that each one may receive what is due him for what he has done in the body, whether good or evil. And before this seat, believers, all believers, all Christians, those who have accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and personal Savior, we will all congregate before this seat otherwise also known as the Bema seat. It is just like the seat that is used at Olympic Games. Anytime a competition is run, you see some three boxes. The, the one who is the winner stands in the middle, and the other two, the, the, the first runner-up and the second runner-up will stand on the left and the right of the winner. And that is how it is going to be. The beamer seat is designed like that. And the Bible says that when we appear before him, each and every one of us will receive a reward or what is due us according to what we did in our body whilst on this earth, whether good or evil. And I want to explain the term good or evil. When he, he talks about, he, he talks about Evil, he's not talking about the sins that we have committed, no. But it is talking about the quality of our Christian service. Hallelujah. The quality of our Christian service. If the quality is good, then it qualifies for what is good. If the quality is bad, 
then it is evil. And what makes it evil? The, the, the common denominator of our Christian service is fire. The Bible says that our work will be tested by fire. And let's look at 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 10 to 15. 1 Corinthians 3, 10 to 15. Paul, writing to the church in Corinth, he said, By the grace God has given me, I laid a foundation as a wise master builder, and someone else is building on it. But each one should build with care, for no one can lay any foundation other than the one already laid, which is Jesus Christ. So Jesus is the foundation. If anyone builds on this foundation using gold, silver, costly stones, wood, hay, or straw, their work will be shown for what it is. Because the day will bring it to light and it will be revealed by fire. And the fire will test the quality of each person's work. If what, if what has been built survives, the builder will receive a reward. If it is burned up, the builder will suffer loss, but he will be saved. One good thing about the Bema judgment is that anybody who qualifies to appear before the Bema judgment, the Bema seat or the judgment seat of Christ will go to heaven. I thought you would say amen. amen. But because before the judgment seat of Christ, it is a, it is we are going to test the quality of your service, the quality of your Christian service, the quality of your Christian life. And you, you see from the test six different kinds of building materials, six different kinds of them. He said some are using gold, some are using silver, and some are using costly stones, Sorry, others are using wood, hay, or straw. <clears throat> Sorry. So if your building material is gold, silver, or stone, it means it can go through the fire without getting burnt. And that qualifies for good. But if your building materials are wood, hay, or straw that qualifies for building material that is evil. And so check yourself. How high is your integrity level? How are you honest? Are you honest in your tithing? Do you tithe faithfully? The other time, I, I, when I came here, I told you that for some people, when it comes to tithing, then they decide that they don't, they don't know mathematics. But God is so good that tithe is dividing whatever you have received by 10. And that is simple. It is not 11. You are not dividing it by 11. Neither are you dividing it by 13.3. You are only dividing by 10. And when you are dividing anything by 10, it is like you are dividing by one. And so you shouldn't make a mistake. And so if your salary is 1,000 Ghana cities and you divide it by 10, and instead of getting 100, you get 80. Then what are you telling me and God and yourself? Are you saying that it was because the questions were too difficult for you? You cannot divide 100 by 10? Is that what you mean? Or are you trying to tell yourself and God that it's because you are daft or what? How can you divide 5,000 by 10 and instead of getting 500, you get 30 cities? Faithfulness. And so he said that when we appear before the judgment seat of Christ, some of us, 
all the, the building that we have, the structure that we have built will be consumed by fire. And you will not get any reward. You will be saved, all right, but you will not get any reward. Jesus Christ told a parable before they, they mounted the boat to Genizareth. And he said, he gave a parable about a good and a wise builder and a foolish builder. He said, the wise builder is someone who, who when he's coming to build, he would dig because at that time, knowledge about cement and iron rolls were not there. And so you have to dig until you get to the bed rock before you, you begin to put on your, your blocks or whatever. But the wise one will dig to the bed rock. Then he will pour in whatever he has to do before he build. But the foolish one will just build on the sand because he doesn't want to waste material because when you dig too much, you waste material, you waste a lot of cement for the building to grow out of the trench before you can build. But the foolish one just build on the surface of the, of the earth. But there are three city engineers, when you read the Bible, there are three city engineers. He said, the flood will come and test the building. And then storms will also come and test the building. And then wind will also come and test the building. The same three engineers but the one who is wise and built on the bedrock will still have his building standing. Hallelujah. Amen. But this one, for this one, for this type of building, the city engineer is the Holy Ghost fire. And he does not come to test the building until you are dead. For the first one, the storms, the rain, and the wind will come and test the bed. And when it is not strong, it will pull it down. But because you are still alive, you can rebuild. But this one, this city engineer who is called fire, he doesn't come to test the land. He will wait until you are dead. Because the building will only be tested when we all come before the judgment seat of Christ. And he said that some will have their work passing as good. Others will have their work passing as evil. That is those who build with wood, those who build with straw, and those who build with hay. But the Bible says that even though they will lose reward, they will be saved. And then the third throne is the white throne judgment. And that is where the book of life will appear. I want us to go back and read the test again, because there are certain personalities in the test that I want to bring to your notice. Revelation chapter 20, verse 11 to 15. Revelation 20, 11 to 15. It said, and I saw a great white throne, and him who was seated on it, that him is God the Father. The earth and the heaven fled before his presence, and there was no place for them. And I saw the dead, so underline the dead, great and small, standing before the throne. Books were open. Which books? How many? Then another book was open, which is called the book of life. The dead were judged according to what they had done as recorded in the book of life. Anybody who appears before the, judge, the, the great white throne will not go to heaven. Anybody. And so if you miss the judgment seat of Christ, you are lost for good. That is why I want to bring this subject before you today so that you will be sure whether your name is in the book of life. Because I shouldn't, I shouldn't have been here today. This reminds me of Paul when Paul, was, when Paul went into the regions of Asia and then he wanted to visit Mysia and the Holy the Bible. He says that the devil didn't allow him. Then he wanted to go to Britannia, and then the Spirit of the Lord stopped him from going. I should have been in Eburasu today. But when I was drawing my itinerary, the secretary who helped me to draw the itinerary, instead of saying Sunday morning, he said Sunday 6 p.m. And none of us observed it. And so the pastor called me. He said, you are coming here 
today, 6 p.m. And I said, no, I'm coming 9 a.m. He said, oh, the announcement I have made is 6 p.m. And I said, can't we change it so that I come in the morning? He said, it will be very difficult for me. Then I said, okay, then I will give you another date. I'll reschedule it and give you another date. So today, I was a free agent. Hallelujah. I didn't have any place to go. And so I quickly called and said, my dad, I want to come here because uh, my, my visiting you on a Sunday will go into 2024. And I don't know whether Jesus would, wouldn't have come by then. And so I decided to come here. And so I strongly believe that God wanted you to hear me preach on this subject. It's your name in the book of life. And so he said he, he saw God. And before God, the heavens and the earth fled away. I was listening to one Nigerian preacher, and then he said that uh, God is not in heaven. And I said, wow. There are three kinds of heaven. You read 2 Timothy chapter 12, and Paul will tell you that. He said, I went to the third heaven. We have the atmospheric heaven. Where the birds, you see the birds and the clouds. Those who have ever flew with an aeroplane. Anytime you, you fly with an aeroplane and you look through the window, you see the clouds under the aeroplane. And then we have where the moon and the stars and the sun, where they are. And then where God is. And so when he says the heavens and the earth fled, He's talking about the atmospheric heaven, not the home of God. Hallelujah. He said he saw God. And then he said he saw the dead, both great and small. These people have resurrected from the, from the dead, but they were still called the dead. Why? It's because they don't have eternal life. Their names are not written in the book of life. That is why even though they have resurrected from the dead, they were still called the dead. And he said, I saw the dead, both great and small. And what does great and small mean? It's not talking about whether you are, you are about six feet or you are about seven feet. The, 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 one, of the first, one of the second presidents, the second president in Senegal called Abu Juf. He was almost close to about seven point something. He was so tall. But when the Bible talks about the dead, great and small, he's not talking about stature. But he is talking about the societal levels. The names some people acquired, either because they were rich or either by some spectacular feat, they have gotten a name, or whether because they, they, they became rich or whether because they were royals, they have made a name. And so anybody who ever came on this terrestrial ball and by the grace of God received a name, but did not accept Jesus Christ as Lord and personal Savior and died. They are those who are called great, even in death. The great and the small. And then he said, I saw death and hell. Death and hate or death and hell. Death is either a condition and a personality. Death is a condition and a personality. What do I mean by condition? When we talk about death, we are talking about the permanent end of all life functions in a living organism. When anybody enters this condition, it means you are dead. But you are alive. Physically, you are alive because all life functions in you still still working. But when it comes to a time that you cannot see, you cannot feel, you cannot sense anything, then it means you are dead. The other definition for death is the severance of the spirit and soul from the body. When you die, your spirit and your soul will depart from your body. And then your body will have to lie down and it will be buried for decomposition to take place. That is a condition. Again, death is not only a condition. 
a enipa kom enko ne mum owu nanga zanzo osan ye nipa death is a personality it is an angelic being revelation chapter 6 verse 8 he said i looked and there before me was a pale horse and its rider's name is death and then hates or hell or grave follow him the word hell is not the final destination of the wicked hell has three other names in the old testament elf, uh, hell is called shoal s h o e l it is a transit point and then when you come into the new testament it has also got three names the niv will say hates that is h a d e s but when you have the king james king james will trans 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 translate the word hates to hell do you have king james all right he said so i look and behold a pale horse and i look before me a pale horse and his name the name that sat on him was death and then hell follow with him praise the lord huh. if you if you ever met a jehovah witness and you don't know the scriptures they will tell you that there is nothing like hell and one of the quotation is this one because death is also not just a place death is also hell is also a personality the other name for hell or hate is also called grave grave has two meanings the the place we dig and put in the coffin is also called grave but the place that the spirit of the dead of those who have not accepted jesus christ as lord and savior the place that their spirit depart to go and wait is also called grave depending on which translation of the bible you are using so you read first corinthians chapter 15 verse 55 and then he says that he said oh death where is your stink oh grave where is your victory you see when he's talking about the grave he's not talking about the hole we dig and put in the coffin no he's talking about the place the departed spirit of the dead where they go and when your friend is a summer don't know no more you want to say a summer do your maya and come and know today i have come to announce to you that a summer don't know your mind and so if you go you take the lead Praise the Lord. Uh -huh. He said, Oh, death, where is thy sting? Oh, grave, where is thy victory? He's not talking about the hole we put the coffin in. No. He's talking about the place where the spirit of the dead go. And then again, it is, all, it is not only the place where the spirit of the dead go to transit later to, to the, the, the lake of fire. But there is an angelic being, one of the fallen angels, which God has given the duty to kill us and to take us from this earth. He's also called grave or hell or hate or in the Old Testament it is called shul. That's four names, the same person. And anytime, sorry, anytime death moves, he follows death. His work and death is like the policeman and the prison officer. When you commit any civil offense on this earth, it is the police that will arrest you. And then he takes you to court and prosecute you. And when you are sentenced, he, the policeman finishes his work. He hands you over to the prison officer and then he keeps you in the prisons. What am I trying to say? What I'm saying is that when, you, when your time comes, and you die. It, will, it is death that will come and take you. When death takes you away, he gives you, hands you over to the grave or hell. 
or hate. Death and hate, they will sit on the same horse. They work together. If I should finish, if I should go back to the test. Revelation 6, 8, he said, I look and there before me is a pale horse. Its rider's name is Death. And so Death has a horse. And hate or hell or grave follows him closely on the same horse. I've told you that death is an angelic being. That is why the Bible says that the last enemy that will be defeated is death. Because by then he would have finished his work. The work that God gave to him to kill us, he would have finished. And the, all the spirit that he has handed to grave, to the grave and to hell and to hate, they will just eject them back to God, and God is going to judge them. And he said that when death has given up all his dead, and the grave has given up all his dead, then they will stand before the white throne judgment, and he said that books were opened. How many? And what are those books? By the grace of God, I will tell you. And then, another book that was named. That another book is the leak. It is the book of life. And all these things are going to happen at the close of the age. At the close of the age, after the church has been raptured and we have, been, we have celebrated the seven-year wedding and has come back on this earth for a thousand years for the battle of Agog, Gog and Magog and Magadon has already taken place. And the devil has been put in the bottomless pit. It was at the final tail end of it that, that this is going to happen. That God is going to appear on the white throne judgment. And then he's going to open the four books plus the book of life. Five. How many are the books? The books that were not named are four. Plus the book of life, five. What are their names? One, the book of conscience. Two, the book of words. Three, the book of secret works inuma enwoma inuma ehinta enwoma for the book of public works then the book of life but before i zero in on the book of life uh, let me give you a foretaste of the books the book of conscience, the book of words, the book of secret works, the book of public works, and then the book of life. What is the book of conscience? What is conscience? Simply, you know, when God created us, he didn't give us any manual. It was after a long time that we had this Bible. And even it, it came in batches. The books were written in batches, in different places, scattered. And the motive at the time, they didn't know at the time that the time was going to come that they were going to collate all the books into 66 and become one book. They didn't know at the time. And so uh, we didn't know what is fornication. We didn't know what was theft because there was nothing recorded anywhere. God didn't give us any manual to tell us that if something doesn't belong to you and you take it, it is stealing. No. There was nothing like if somebody's wife, you, 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 you convert somebody's wife or you sleep with somebody's wife, it was adultery or fornication. And that God didn't like it. We didn't know it. But God gave us in, in our human faculty, God gave us something. 
And so the conscience is a human faculty used to judge what is right or wrong. And that is part of your spirit. You know, this body of mine, uh, when you read 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 24 and 25, you see that he said that may God sanctify you through and through. May God sanctify you, your spirit, your soul, and your body. And so man is a trapatite. Your spirit has also got three components. One is your conscience and what we call intuition and then what we call communion. When you say communion, we, not, we are not talking about the Lord's Supper. These are three, three components of your spirit. Your conscience, your intuition, and then the communion. The communion helps you to contact God. And so, within your spirit is what we call the conscience. It's a human faculty used to judge what is right or wrong. So, anything that you want to do, any action that you want to take, it will go through your conscience for your conscience to process it. And then the, your conscience will give you the final verdict, whether it is good or bad. But whether you will do it, we want to take an action that decision will have to go through your soul because that is where your will is. Your will is the decision center. And so after your conscience has processed your action and your thought and has said it is good, then your, 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 your will will permit you to take the action. But there are times that your conscience will say your action or what you are going to do is wrong, but you will still do it. And the conscience has no power to stop you from doing whatever you want to do. All that it will do is to tell you that your action is wrong or right. But as to whether you want to proceed in doing or not, that one lies with you. And so, the conscience also acts as a judge and as a policeman. And so after it has processed your thoughts and the actions you want to take and has said that it is wrong and you still go ahead to execute it, then it will arrest you. What we call guilty conscience. That is why anytime you have taken any wrong action, even though nobody has found you, you still feel guilty because of your conscience. Number two. The conscience has another weakness. Any society or any tribe or a cultural group that accept a certain action to be right, whether it is wrong. If a group thinks that this is right, the conscience will also accept it. The conscience will give you the affirmation even though it is wrong. That was why the Bible says that God is greater than your conscience. That was why God brought his word, the scriptures. And so it is only the scriptures that are the direct cause. It will not branch to the left nor to the right. It will not branch to the left for the Ashantis, neither will it branch to the right for the Ives. When you, if, when, when you come to our society, if somebody is taking a second wife and he doesn't know the Lord, nothing will tell him that Taking a second wife is wrong. The Ashantis, what they, what they do is what we call Ayifre. Ayifre is a ube tue bibi. They will go on and take the second wife. And your conscience will not say a word. And then number three, when the conscience disapproves of any action and you, you, you still proceed to do, the first time the voice, his voice of saying no will be so loud and clear. But the second time when you are going to repeat the same action, you see that his voice will be coming down to at a point that after taking repeated action of the same wrongdoing, it will come to a time when you are going to take the same wrong action, 
the conscience will not speak again. See, Adia won't ye be da. So, who could break your mouth for a who come my bebo? Who could queen you pa? The conscience will be shouting in your head and in your chest. But after you have done the first one, the second one, the third one, the fifth one, by the sixth one, the conscience, the voice of the conscience, you will not hear it again. And it will look like the conscience is giving you approval now. But it's all because your conscience has become seared, what we call the seared conscience. Praise the Lord. Then the book of secret works. Whatever you do in secret is recorded. You yourself, you are a recorder. Whatever you do, you have recorded. You record it in your spirit and you record it in your mind. That is why at times, when you have learned a song, or there is an old song that you have sung for some years past, because new ones have come and you are not singing the old ones, it will look like you have forgotten them, but no, it will still be submerged in your subconscious. When somebody picks it, or when somebody raises it in church, you will see that you begin to, begin to sing along because the words will just be coming, popping out from your mind. So any action you take, you record it for God. And so, the book of secret works will be opened that day. And everything that you have done, if you will ever go before the throne, the white throne judgment, everything you have done will just pop up. Secret works. So there is nothing like secret works. It is only secret because when you were doing it, you were the only person. And being the old person, to God, you become his witness. You become his witness. That day. And then we have the book of public works. Even though there are times that we take actions that seem good in public, the motive, the motive may be wrong. And so any action you take in public, which looks good and fine in the public eye, God will be looking at your motive. And so when you take any supposedly right action with a wrong motive before God, it is still wrong. And that day, the book of public works will give you away. The book of public works. And then the book of words. The Bible says that you are snared by the words of your mouth. When Peter spoke that day, when he said, when they asked him whether he knew Jesus, and he said, no, the lady said, your ascent even your accent is giving you away because the people of Galilee, they had a, a, a heavy tongue. They, they, will not, they, they are not able to pro, pro, pronounce certain words. If you have ever stayed in the Gambia, the country close to Senegal, they are not able to pronounce this sound, S-H. Shh, they, they can't. No Gambian, except maybe he was born outside Gambia. They will say S. And you go through the Bible, the Ephraimites. The Ephraimites, when they, they caught them, they asked you, whether you are an Ephraimite? He said, no. He said, okay. Then say, Shibolet. Have you ever read that one? That is in the Bible. Shibolet in, in Judges. And the Ephraimites, or is it the Gilead, the Gildites? They were not able to pronounce the, the sound, H. So instead of saying, Shibolet, they will say, Sibolet. And they say, you, you are found out. And so you are worse. The things that you speak about God, the things that you speak about your pastor, you speak about your presiding elder, the things that you speak about your president, any unpalatable word used against any authority, the Bible says that it will come out. So the book of works, the book of works, secret works, the book of public works, and then the book of conscience. And then finally, because of time, finally, the book of conscience. The book of conscience. What is it? What is it? Sorry. 
the book of life, sorry. The book of life, what is it? There are school, two schools of thought about the book of life. Some say that it is a book where God records all people that have ever come on the surface of this earth. Anybody born by a man and a woman. Immediately you are born, your God records your name. It's in you, number two, three. The mouth, two scenarios of the book of life. And then you choose the one which suits your understanding and, and, and your heart. And then later, if you die and you do not accept Jesus Christ as Lord and personal Savior and you die, then your name is canceled. Very important to me, so I will say it in three. So that is the first one. And some say that, no, God is not like a, a class one people who write and later when he sees that he has made a mistake, then he will cancel it. No, that is not how God works. And so, those who are of the second school of thought, which I'm going to say in a moment, say that that is not how God works. He will not just record people's name through birth and then later when you do not accept Jesus as Lord and personal Savior, then he will cancel your name. Because after all, he knows all those who will accept Jesus Christ as Lord and personal Savior. So that is not how he works. And so they also have their thought. I'll, I'll bring it out. But it looks, when you, there is a scripture which seems to support the first school of thought. Revelation 3, 5, it says that the one who conquers will, will be clothed in white garment and his name will never be blot out of the book of life. Hello? So, this test seems to suggest that your name can be or can come into the book of life and then later be canceled. So the first school of thought seems to have support in the scriptures. Hello? Right. And then the second school of thought say that no, that is not how people's name come into the book of life through the, the birth canal. Here you are born, yeah, then God writes your name, then later, then he does, that his book will be dirty. And so that is not how God works. But it looks like the scripture I've read for you seems to support that school of thought that people's name could come into the book of life and later be, be taken out. But the second school of thought say that no, God will not just be writing people's name and later be canceling them. No. He will wait. But you are born again before your name will go into the book of life. And they also have support. And their support is in Revelation 13, 8. He said, and it was given authority, that is uh, the beast or the antichrist was given authority over every tribe, people, language, and nations. And all inhabitants on earth will worship the beast. All whose names have not been written in the Lamb's book of life. 
So this test seems to suggest that it is possible that there are some people whose names have never, ever come into the book of life. And so this scripture defeats the first school of thought. That immediately you are born, your name is, goes into the book of life. Immediately you are born, your name goes into the book of life. But this text tells us that there are some people whose name who have ne- which have never, ever come into the book of life. And so which is which? Mary Chen, name I know. Wasso Radan Panimu Mary Chang Me Jesus the Uncle Chang Nawaba Mary Tell Namiri Tia and your best young waters you Mary Chang Me Jesus and your best young bless you, Mary Chang, me Jesus, and shall now And so, how do names go into the book of life? Is it by birth, by man and woman? Is it through just the birth canal? Yeah, then your name is written. Which seems to have support here. Or is it the second thought that some names have never ever come into the book of life? It means that if that is true, then it means that the name does not just come through physical birth. Praise the Lord. Are you here? I'm saying go out to me kind of baby. I just a PI because what they say, Marcus Squid, my brain was slow. And so, how does a name come into the book of life? Is it just by birth? Is so it immediately you are born, your name goes into it, and then later taken away? But this t- test also shows that there are some names that have never ever come into the book of life, even though they are on this earth. But the Bible is also true that there are some names that go there and later taken out. So how did it get there? Praise the Lord. When you accept Jesus Christ as Lord and personal Savior, your name will be written in the book of life. But the Bible says that those who conquer, those who stay in the Lord to the end, and so it is possible for your name to enter into the book of life by accepting Jesus Christ as Lord and personal Savior. But if you are not able to persevere to the end, if you are not able to stand to the end, you are not able to hold on to the faith. If you do not have the spirit of Ruth, no, the spirit of Naomi, eh? no, Ruth, rather. It was Ruth and Opa who decided to follow Naomi back to Bethlehem. But along the way, Opa decided to turn back and go home. Go back to his own people. Go back to idol worship. Go back to worldliness. And so today, You have accepted the Lord Jesus as Lord and Savior. Your names are written in the book of life. But are you going to persist to the end? Are you going to persevere to the end? 
If you do not persevere to the end, your name will be taken out. And so those whose names were taken out were not those who were just born by a man and a woman and got their names there. No. But rather those who accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and personal Savior and with joy serve the Lord. But in the end, they departed from the Lord. The Bible says that the first can be the last. And the last can be first. When we go to heaven, there will be surprises. One of my pastor's friends said, there was one, one personality in Ghana. I don't want to mention his name so that it would be offensive. He said that if he meet that man in heaven, he will be disappointed. He, he would have wished that that man never repented. That is the spirit of Jonah. But there are some people at the point of death, they can decide for God. And you go and find them, they, they never entered into any church. There are some people too. They are here. They are paying their tithe. They are praying. They are fasting. But if you are not careful to persevere to the end, and you drop by, your name will be blotted out of the book of life. And so, I also believe and accept the fact that it is not all those who are born to the face on the and those who came on the face of this earth who just had their names written in the book of life. But it is rather that was why there are some people whose names have never ever entered into the book of life. If you come, you visit this earth, whether you stay here for five years or 20 years or 80 years, and you die, and you never accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and personal Savior, and you die. Your name will never, ever had come into the book of life, let alone to be taken out. Amen. That was why in the scriptures, you don't, there are some people whose names have never, ever entered the book of life. And those whose names were taken out are those who accepted Jesus as Lord and personal Savior, but they were not able to carry their salvation through. The Bible says that work out your salvation with fear and trembling. Salvation, we don't work for our salvation because salvation is by grace. But after you have been saved, you have to work out your salvation. You know, salvation is in three tenses. We, 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 have, we, we are saved. And as long as we are here and not dead, we are being saved. And then we shall be saved. And so past tense, continuous tense, and future tense. You have been saved, all right. And you are being saved. And if you do not allow the process to end in death, and you quit, that is where you find your name taken out of the book of life. And so as long as we are alive, we are being saved. The messages that we receive daily, the scriptures that you read, the check that you come, you, you are preached to, you go to counseling, you are counseled on a certain issue, and then you stop, and then you, you whip your Christian life in line with the word of God and the details of God, you are being saved. And so if the, the process of salvation goes on and you die in the Lord, then you will be saved. It is then that you will be saved. Our souls and our spirit, our spirit is saved, but our souls are being saved. You know your soul. Your soul is your mind, your emotions, and your will. And so any mammy answer. What dream? What think? Enna okra ope. So any me bum any a friend say okra soul. Your mind, your will, and your emotions. So we are being saved. We use the word of God to renew our minds. So if we are able to stay in the word, 
stay in all the challenges, all the troubles that Christianity may bring upon you. You are able to go through all the torrents of challenges that you go, you, you ever go through or the, the race that God has marked for you. If you are able to run to the finishing line, it is then that your body will be saved. We are saved. We are being saved. And we shall be saved. One ma shall na ma udino yebekwa kopepa. And so, as I bring my message to a close, is your name in the book of life? Yes. But for how long can it be there? It depends on you and I. Shall we bow down our heads? Reflect on the message. Is your name in the book of life? Is your name, even those who attend university, yes. You go to level 100, level 100, 200, 300, level 400. For us, our time, the university was three years. If you are not able to complete and you drop by at level 300, you will not graduate. If you drop by at level 200, you will not graduate. And even when you have referrals and you don't write them, you will not graduate. Spiritually, there are some people who have referred us. You sinned, and you are still living in sin. You have not stopped. Is your name in the book of life? Yes. But till when? Can you stay in the book till you die? Can you die with your Christian life? Can you die with your Christian faith? That is the most important. And so in the midst of our joy, in the midst of our jumping, in the midst of our victories, in the midst of our miracles, in the midst of our challenges, will your name stay in the book of life till the end? Now I want you to begin to pray. Tell God something. This time, just don't, don't shout. Just pray. Possibly pray in, in, in a known language. Pray in English, ga, ever, or tree. The mottons. Tell God something. Look at your, the quality of your Christian life. Is it gold? Is it silver? Is the quality a precious stone? Gold is the best. Gold is a symbol for divine. But silver is not bad. Precious stone is not bad, but wood is not good. Straw is not good. Hay is not good. There are some people, any temptation that faces them, they will fail. Any trial that they will face, they will bow. But if you bow, you will burn. This is a message I heard in, in the early 80s by one man of God called Jerry Savile. He said, if you bow, you will burn. And his test was from the story of how Nebuchadnezzar raised an image. And the three Hebrew lads decided not to bow to the image. And they were thrown into the fire. Those who threw the three Hebrew lads into the fire were those who had bowed to the image. And because they had bowed to the image, even though they didn't enter the oven, they were just <laughs> uh, some meters away from the fire, but they still got burnt and died. But those who didn't bow to the image got into the fire and they were still alive because the fourth man was with them in the fire. If you bow, you will burn. There are some people, every temptation that, that flies over their head, they will bow for it. Every trial, they will bow Check your life and see the quality of your Christian service, the quality of your Christian life, your commitment to God, your, your, your integrity level. Is it straw? Is it wood? Is it hay? Or it is as solid as gold? You see that gold, silver, and precious stone, when they go through fire, they, they, they don't get destroyed. Because before you get gold, it, it might have passed through fire. 
You have to burn the gold and, and, and sieve all the chaff from it. So it's silver. Silver, you have to put it in fire and then burn it and remove the chaff, remove the dross from it before you can get proper silver. And then precious stone, before you get precious stone, precious stone have to go through pressure and heat. Pressure and heat and weight before you can get precious stone. You know that if there, is, if there are geographers and geologists here, you know that all rocks are formed from sand. Abobia free anyem anyano asasi heat any asasi emudro emiano if it compresses upon it and we get our metamorphic rocks we get our igneous rocks and then our sedimentary rocks it comes from heat and pressure there are some believers there are some Christian people they don't want to go through any challenge when there is any challenge they want to go by the back door if you do that. Your quali the quality of your Christian service will be like wood, straw, or hay. And when it goes through fire, it will burn. Anytime you see wood, you see proper wood, and your friend, a brood, you have you. Your friend is a son. One she, your friend is a baby. Those three building materials, when they go through fire, their name will change. But gold, silver, precious stone, when they go through fire, it is even there that they become brighter. And brothers and sisters, Jesus is coming soon. Since time immemorial, we have been saying Jesus is coming soon. Jesus is coming soon. Now, the soon has become more than sooner. And very soon, he will come. His coming is just at the door. Somebody just brought our mind to the fact that the land that God promised Abraham, Israel has taken all except Gaza. It is left with Gaza that they will have to take. And when they have conquered all the lands from the very first... Uh, border to the last border, then God is preparing to come. Very soon we will hear the trumpet sound. That is why I want to remind myself and you, all the things that we are doing on this earth is good, but we are on transit. Don't forget the fact that we are here to transit. Either you die or Jesus comes to pick you away. Today, be sure your name is in the book of life. We know unto me in chacha. Because it is appointed to man to die once and after death, judgment. When you die, you don't come back. You don't come back. You don't come back to make amends. It is now. If you want to accept the Lord as your personal Savior, please say this prayer with me. Lord Jesus, I come to you just as I am. I repent of all my sins. I ask you to forgive me according to your word. I believe you died. I believed you were buried. I believe you rose on the third day. Now, Jesus, I invite you to come into my heart. Be my Lord and personal Savior. Write my name in the book of life. Help me to serve you all the days of my life. Fill me with your spirit. Any covenant between me and the devil from today is broken. It's destroyed. I'm a new creature. I am born again. Thank you for saving me. In Jesus' name. Amen. Please, if you pray this prayer, please scan the link on the screen or call the numbers below. 0247 080 or 0241-622-420. 0241-622-420. God bless you.